Mm. You got on. YouTube on too? Huh? YouTube is on too? No, uh, we're waiting for that to, to load up. Okay. Just another minute. Does anybody have uh, Kevin Hussein's cell huh? to mm -hmm. text? No? meeting is being live streamed. Okay. Uh, I think we need to um, promote everybody yeah. to a panelist. So I'm working from the bottom up. Not sure who Abby Fettis is, but I promoted her too. Let's see if they come on. Here's Mr. Cody. Okay. All right, the others aren't going to put on their camera. Okay, all right, it's seven oh seven. I will call the Inland Wetlands and Watercourse Commission. Of Bloomfield to Otter. In attendance, we have <clears throat> Kevin Wilcox, Adam, Nadine, Katie, and myself. So we have five out of the nine. Uh, for the applicant, our regulations are that we need uh, four in the affirmative, which means that with only five members, if the vote is three to two, it does not pass. And you have an option to postpone till the next meeting or proceed tonight. What do you want to do? Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. My name is Tom Cody. I'm an attorney at the firm of Robinson and Cole, and we represent the applicant um, for both of the applications before you this evening, North Point Development, LLC. Um, we appreciate the opportunity to answer your question about the quorum and the voting requirements. Um, I think that um, our team is excited to, to move forward and we would like to, to open this hearing and, and get going with our presentation. And, um, you know, to the extent that on this wetland map amendment, you, you are in a position to vote tonight uh, we are comfortable with the attendance as it currently sits. Yeah, um, Mr. Cody, I don't see your name on the application as the legal. Peter, do you see it anywhere? Oh, wait a minute, next page, what do I see? Oh yeah, okay, I got it. Yeah. All right. Yeah, the, uh, I believe it, there are. Uh, yeah, the conflict of interest. Well, I found it. I was okay, there, there's you. there's a letter also in your packet from the property owners. Correct. Okay, you got that. Yeah, I did send everybody before we started the meeting the additional information that I requested uh, for the conflict of interest form um, from the applicant. Uh, which had a pretty long list. They also listed the present property owners, which is a shorter list. Okay. Okay, so this is a public hearing. Is there a motion to open the public hearing? So moved. 
Made by Kevin Wilcox. Seconded by? Seconded. Adam? Yep. All right. Uh, any discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. All right. Um, who's here for the applicant for Whitlands a map amendment for North Point development? Mr. Chairman, um, again, this is Tom Cody for the record. Um, our presentation this evening on this map amendment application will be made by Dean Gustafson with All Points Technology. Mr. Gustafson is our professional wetland scientist and his firm um, conducted the site investigation that led to the delineation that is the subject of this application. So why don't I turn the floor over to Mr. Gustafson? Okay. All right, Mr. Gustafson, one moment, please. Peter, isn't this a site that we just approved, uh, what was it, last year? 2017. 2017? Yeah. Okay. So it wasn't, yeah, right. it's, it's uh, um, it was approved with a map amendment and a permit for the Butler Construction Company, who's presently occupying the site. So, yeah, it's uh, it's on the dog leg at West Dudley Town Road. Okay. All right. Um, and just so the applicant is aware that our goal is to uh, adjourn by 10 o'clock, we like our applicants to be precise in their answers. Uh, we don't necessarily need a history of the parcel unless a commissioner asks for it. Uh, we like it bare bones, what's there, what are you going to do, and how you're going to protect the wetlands. So please proceed. Great. Understood, Mr. Chairman. Thank you for those directions. Uh, good evening, folks. My name is Dean Gustafson. I am a professional soil scientist and senior wetland scientist with All Points Technology Corporation, PC, located in Waterford, Connecticut. Um, if you could give Free um, screen sharing rights to David Gagnon. We'll bring up our presentation and I uh, will work through the slides. Sure, and I'll just introduce myself really quick. Uh, my name is David Gagnon. I'm a civil engineer with Langan Engineering here uh, representing the applicant and I'll be sharing my screen and Dean will be describing uh, what I'm sharing. Alan, do we have to make him a co-host to share? Uh, I, um, I think I have the ability. I'm pulling it up right yeah. now. No. Looks like you have. I didn't see that, but come on. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the rest of us. Uh, some folks may be working on a laptop. So if with a small screen, so if you could zoom in, uh, you know, show the big page and then zoom in maybe uh, that far or, or further when we get into the details, but I understand this okay. is just a, this is just a location. All right, great. So the um, this wetland map amendment application is for a 56 acre industrial site located at 116 West Dudley Town Road. Um, this is an overview map showing the subject parcel location um, and oriented uh, with West Dudley Town Road kind of surrounding to the north and to the west of the subject property. Uh, Blue Hills Avenue is um, separated by some existing commercial industrial development from the site to the east. Uh, the site is currently occupied by Butler Construction Company, um, which serves as their uh, operation and center for uh, material equipment storage and processing yard. Next slide, Dave. Great, thank you. Um, to the chairman's point about, you know, not delving too deep into the historic perspective of this property, I think it is worth just touching on it quickly um, because this property was subject to a wetland map amendment uh, in 2017 uh, that was approved by the commission and was noted by file number 75-2017-03. Uh, and there was also a subsequent uh, wetland application for the current Butler operation, um, which also included some buildings in an office building that was never constructed. 
Um, that application was approved in March 2017, file number 75-2017-04. Uh, and those approved activities have resulted in wetland changes to the current site conditions as compared to the original uh, map amendment approval by this commission. So uh, it's just worth noting that because it does have a bearing on some of the changes that we'll describe to the commission in a moment um, with respect to what was previously approved uh, for an official map amendment and what we're proposing for a modification uh, to that approval. Next slide, please. So this is just an aerial overview of uh, somewhat current site conditions. Um, and it in yellow highlighted lines uh, shows the uh, delineated wetland resources. That was a result of an investigation of the site uh, performed during the summer of 2022 by ABT soil scientists, resulting in the delineation of jurisdictional wetlands under the purview of this commission. Um, as you can see, the, the uh, Butler operation uh, encompasses the, the large majority of the site uh, and also including areas in close proximity to existing wetland resource areas. Next slide, please. So this is our wetland map amendment plan that's been submitted for consideration by the Wetland Commission. Um, the different colors are the, the highlighted blue areas represent previous delineated wetland resources that were approved through a map amendment by the commission. And then the highlighted green heavy line represent the uh, current wetland conditions, wetland jurisdictional boundaries on the subject property as recently delineated by my firm. And so there's some notable changes uh, between the two. Uh, first and foremost, kind of in the central portion of the site, there are three isolated wetlands as Dave's circling with his cursor now. Uh, those were identified as wetland C in the previous Butler application. Those isolated wetlands were filled as part of the permit approval for that project, so those resources no longer exist. The other change um, to jurisdictional boundaries on the site are related to three stormwater, wet, stormwater basins that were constructed as part of the permit approval uh, for the Butler application. And those basins either the, the two ones that are in kind of the southern half of the site, um, the entirety of those two basins are now considered to satisfy the technical requirements to be uh, classified as wetlands under state statute and your regulations. And then the far western um, basin, uh, the most western portion of that basin uh, contains wetland uh, qualities to consider at least the portion or the wetter portion of that basin to be a regulated wetland area. Albeit, albeit all three of those features are man-made wet man-made features. Uh, they were intentionally constructed for stormwater renovation, but they're sustaining hydrology, wetland vegetation, and, and more importantly, soil characteristics to be considered uh, jurisdictional wetland features by state statute. Finally, the, the last change to the previously approved wetland delineation is associated with a wetland creation area that was part of the Butler uh, approved permit. And Dave's circling this area in here that's kind of uh, surrounded by uh, what was labeled as wetland four. And that wetland creation area was partially created uh, during Butler's uh, development of the site under its permit approval. Um, that area does not, does not contain the necessary uh, criteria as, um, as required through that permit application, um, but it was excavated deep enough and it 
sustains hydrology of the wetland soil characteristics enough to be considered a new wetland area, although it doesn't satisfy the requirements of the permit approval, um, but I'll, I'll get to those points uh, in our next application. So with, with those exceptions noted, um, and they're all associated with kind of the approved man-made activities uh, on the site, um, what we're proposing here is the amendment to the official town's wetland map. And that concludes our presentation and I'll hand it back to the chairman and uh, the team's available or myself's available for any questions. Okay. Uh, Peter, do you have a staff report? Yes, I do. You'll find it in your in your packet. Um, and it is dated January 11th. Um, and uh, what I'd like to do, or uh, perhaps um, Mr. Gustafson would prefer to do, uh, is to look at each of the areas in more detail um, by zooming in on them. Uh, uh, on the screen here, and also, um, you know, what, what was found in, in each one. Um, so um, if you could pick one of the three areas and, and zoom in on it, that'd be wonderful. And, and maybe Dean, if it works for you, I'll start from south and go north on the project site. So I'll, I'll start in this area and we could continue uh, northward. Yep, no, that'd be great. Thank you, Dave. Um, so you can see the, the change from the previously approved wetland um, amendment shaded in blue. Um, the updated wetland delineation is fairly consistent with that previous delineation with some just minor um, modifications where we're showing slightly more wetlands than what was previously delineated. And then most notably, there's a new wetland area um, that has was constructed in previous, previous upland areas. Uh, and that portion of that stormwater, constructed stormwater basin uh, contains sufficient hydrology wetland soils to be classified as a new wetland area on the site. And, and that part uh, that's designated wetlands is only a, a small section of the, of the overall stormwater basin, which extends almost up to the end of the other flagged wetland. So right in there. Yeah, that's that, correct. Yeah, what yeah. Dave is kind of circling with his cursor is kind of the limits of that new basin. Right. Um, that area is is classified as a dry basin. It doesn't contain uh, hydrology or wetland soils to be classified as a wetland. It's just the lower portion of the, like the lower third or quarter of that basin um, is sustaining enough hydrology. It was excavated deep enough in that's intercepting some local groundwater uh, table. So that's just that, that lower portion is considered uh, a new wetland area albeit a man-made one because of the stormwater construction. I think it's also might be important to point out that there, there's a, there's a riprap berm that runs through the middle of this basin to create a four bay. It's not real clear in the topography, but uh, this part that was flagged as wetlands is on the downstream side or the, whatever the opposite of the four bay is. Yep, that, that's correct. Okay. So there's a couple of areas of, of difference between the previous approved map amendment and what we're proposing and for this new modification to the map amendment. Most notably, um, it's the cursor is pointing to uh, identify as what we're considering it uh, for descriptive purposes is wetland three. Um, that is again, a constructed uh, stormwater basin feature uh, that was approved as part of the development plan. Um, that area is intercepting some local uh, high groundwater table. It 
is currently um, dominated by wet meadow uh, vegetation, predominantly native uh, wetland vegetation, but there is some invasive uh, purple loosestrife in that basin. Um, and with the, the sustained hydrology in that area, it is supporting not only wetland vegetation, um, but also it is exhibiting wetland soil characteristics enough that it would be classified as a wetland under state statute. Um, so that's the most notable change, new wetland area because of that constructed, constructed activity. And then just to the southeast, Dave is circling the wetland creation area. Um, that's a new wetland area that um, adjoins previously delineated wetland areas. Uh, that entire feature were just for identification purposes were identified as wetland four. Um, and then where we have the soil symbol nine uh, in, on this graphic, a there is a, a smaller inclusion of uplands in there. We're considering it, you know, for the purposes of this map amendment, it's all considered wetlands. Um, but there, we did make a note in our wetland delineation report that there is a small inclusion of uplands in that area. Um, it has no benefit to uh, the proposed development uh, for the applicant. So we, we saw no purpose in uh, providing additional um, delineation to you know, parse out that area. So, so those are the notable changes for that feature. And, and just by way of reference, um, um, Peter and I met this morning uh, out in the field to review uh, kind of the wetland boundary areas noted by 4-10 through 4-23. It's just to the southwest of the basin area. Um, Peter had some question about, you know, the delineation in that area. Um, there's a lot of flags out there with con converging wetland boundaries, so it is a little confusing to kind of walk the boundary, figure out where, what's wetlands, what's uplands in certain areas. So we clarified that area, and I think to um, to the satisfaction of Peter's inquiry. So Peter, I don't know if you want me to pause here, if you want to weigh in on that particular meeting this yeah. morning. Yes, uh, I'm sorry, could we go back to the previous view? Um, this area, uh, if you if you just look at the light blue, which was the previous approved uh, flagging, it's got you know it, there's a little piece that's that's separate. There's fingers. There's you know it's kind of a funny shape. Um, but this one has uh, the new flagging has has essentially closed the loop at the right hand upper right hand side as we're looking at it, which would be northwest. Um, but I did have some questions about the upland ex exclusion uh, or inclusion, I guess, um, in that, you know, in that southwesterly corner of Wetland 4. Uh, and we also looked at the area uh, designated at, with the symbol 9, um, because that part wasn't flagged as wetlands before, and now, now it's included. So, so it, was a, it was a good meeting. I think the wetland flagging is accurate uh, in this area. And I'm glad we were able to get out there and take a look. Um, uh, Nadine was able to come out uh, and, and see the site with me. And this is the one spot where, where there was, uh, were a lot of flags and it wasn't clear exactly, um, you know, where the, where the little throat area coming in uh, was, um, but, uh, we we looked at it again today, so I'm satisfied that the that the flagging is accurate. All right, great, thank you, Peter. All right, Dave, we can move into the last area, kind of in the southeast corner. Yeah, actually, the north is to the do right on this map. Do we want to the delete? Right. North is to the right. Um, do we want to discuss the deletion of these three 
pockets. Yeah, I can, I can, thanks, David. I can quickly make note of that. So as part of the previous approved development plan for the Butler application, um, those three isolated wetlands were filled as part of the project. So that's now upland area. And so the, the last area is associated with uh, the identifier wetland six. This is again, another constructed uh, stormwater basin uh, that was approved as part of the Butler application. Um, this area was excavated deep enough that it's intercepting the seasonal high groundwater table in this part of the property. Uh, it's supporting and dominance of wetland vegetation, uh, mainly wet meadow, but there is some uh, Bev Willow, uh, some a little bit of shrub growth in that basin as well. And it uh, sustains hydrology long enough that it's exhibiting uh, wetland soil characteristics. So it would be technically classified as, as wetlands uh, under your regulations. And the boundary associated with the, uh, the wetland corridor that's associated with an intermittent stream system which converges, eventually transitions to a perennial, unnamed perennial stream system. Um, that delineation work is substantially the same as the previous approved wetland map amendment. And so I think I think that covers all the, the main <coughs> changes. Okay. Yeah. Peter, anything else to add? Yes. Um, the only thing that uh, um, I would like to add for this one is that. Um, along the water course, there's a, there's a pinch point where the wetlands come together. And there's actually a culvert there. There's a, uh, I think it's a 24 inch concrete culvert. That's correct. Um, and I would, I just wanted to point that out because there's, um, there, uh, you know, the, the wetlands, uh, the culvert was placed for a farm field uh, crossing you know, uh, across this water course for tractors and stuff. So it's not a, uh, it's not a, a road per se now, but the, it is possible to walk down there and see the, see the culvert. Um, and that may be more appropriate discussion for the next application, but there's a possibility there to, um, you know, to uh, open up the water course for mitigation, if that's something that comes up. Okay, so um, my recommendations again are for. Uh, uh, let me just back up a little bit. I'm sorry. Um, uh, I was out in the field um, on January 10th, and again, uh, in my in my staff report, I say there were some small areas of standing water, um, and one area near flags 4-10 through 4-23. Uh, was questioned in a field meeting, uh, you know, was held as Mr. Gustafson said uh, this morning on the site. So um, there were a few technical um, plan revisions that we asked for, as we always do. Uh, and my um, recommended conditions, uh, excuse me, um, are uh, that the applicants submit a revised plan um, and that they submit revised, uh, I'm sorry, they uh, revised plan for review and approval. And then when that's approved, uh, second condition of approval is three sets of paper plans and one fixed mylar uh, to be signed by the commission and for filing on the land records. Uh, actually, that's number three, the permit he shall file the signed mylar of the wetlands map amendment on the Bloomfield land records. Uh, recommended condition of approval four is the new flag wetlands line will be resolved with the official mat at property lines near, at the property lines near wetland flags 4 1, 4 56, 5 42, 5 7, and 5 14, and at the official map line near flag 5 20. So there's a you know, there's a bunch of uh, there's a bunch of um, 
um, you know, flag numbers near or close to the property line that would be uh, where the the present map and the, the new flagging is uh, uh, is um, uh, resolved or, or come together to make to make it uh, to make it work. Um, but it also occurred to me as we were having the discussion and looking at that overhead um, photograph uh, that some of the some of the active sites on the uh, uh, some of the sorry some of the areas near the wetlands are very close to the active um, construction company uh, activities on the site. And I would further make a recommendation that that the wetlands that are in close proximity to where they're working now be protected somehow with either, um, you know, uh, additional flagging or preferably some kind of indication outside of the wetlands to prevent any uh, any accidental encroachments. Would a silt fence be appropriate? Yeah, I don't. I'm not sure silt fence would would be would be necessary here because it's although it would protect the wetlands. M my thinking is that it would be better. It would be for, a marker, huh? It would it be it would be using it as a marker. Right, right. No, my thought was using the the orange construction fence. Okay. Um, if there's areas, and I don't think there are, because we walk we walked out there. Uh, and I'm trying to remember how close some of these were. My, my recollection was that some were very close. And I don't think it's necessary to put barrier fence around all of the wetlands, just the ones that are close to their active site. Okay. I mean, and they have, they have a lot of activities going on there. Yeah. That's all I have, Mr. Chairman, thank uh, you. Is the applicant okay with those conditions? Anybody? Hi, how are you? This is uh, Brian Roslin, uh, North Point Development, the applicant. I, I would, my only concern with accepting the condition on the current operation of the seller is that we are not the seller, not the current operation at the site. So, I mean, Tom, Tom Cody, I don't know if you have any thoughts there. I, I think that would be a concern of mine is, you know, if we own the site today, I think we'd have no problem doing so, but we don't own the site yet. Um, so I, I don't think I could speak on behalf of the seller in terms of, of taking on a condition of their current operation. Well, according to the letter, they, they gave you permission to make all the decisions pertinent to wetlands, I believe. Authorization and consent to land use application. Uh, Mr. Cody, would that put you in control of the uh, marking of the wetlands, as Peter described, in those conditions? Um, I, I, Mr. Chairman, this is Tom Cody. I, I don't. Uh, my my first reaction is that 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 consent letter would not be enough to to give this applicant, North Point Development, the authority to go out to the site and to start installing uh, fencing or other, or other barriers. Um, the, the consent letter gave the commission and their staff the right to enter the property to review this application, but I don't, I don't think it goes that far. And I, I share Brian's concern that North Point would be left kind of in the middle of this discussion, at least for the period of time prior to acquisition. Okay. Um, before we get too deep into this, Peter, would it be all right to approve it on contingent upon them getting written permission from the owner to do this? Would that be okay? Or do we do we need a definite letter from the uh, owner before we approve it? Well, I I think there might you know uh, there might be a a way to um, 
you know, to uh, achieve the same um, achieve the same goal um, in uh, you could condition or you could you could word the condition of approval to indicate something in of that of that nature. The other thing that occurred to me as we were talking is that it could be um, just uh, reestablishing the flags that are close. You know, some of them were, were out there. Most of them were out there. There were a few that were on the ground. So, you know, that, that might be a way to, to achieve, you know, protection of the existing wetlands uh, and still be within the, within the uh, scope of the, of the approval letter. I think that's, there's two ways to do that. You could, you know, change it to just resetting all the flags or the missing ones, I should say, or make the condition of approval contingent on when they, when they uh, purchase the property. I'm not sure I like that second one better though. I think I like the first, first option better. Yeah, yeah. Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I could interject here. Sure. Great, thank you. So I, I think Peter brings up a, a good suggestion is to reestablish the wetland boundaries as they're facing the current site development activities. And what we could do is not only reestablish the wetland flag points um, as per the map amendment, but in between those flags, we could hang uh, pink wetland delineation flagging um, to clearly denote where the wetland jurisdictional boundary is so that, you know, the Butler operation, there's no question about where the wetland boundary is. So uh, I think, um, you know, I don't know, if, Brian, if you're comfortable with that approach, but that's something we could certainly accomplish. Yes, yeah, North Point and my, myself, we're totally comfortable with that. And that falls within, you know, our, our allowed activities um, as having the kind of, having the site under contract and our entitlement efforts here. Yeah. Peter, that good with you? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, any questions from the public? Is there any public here? Hey, um, I don't see. We have two additional people. Yeah, but I don't see Brian's name, who was the applicant and was just so, speaking. Yeah, so Peter, we're logged in. Sorry, I was driving before. So we logged in under David Rickard, um, who's a, a vice president of North Point. So we're actually at a, at a table together right now. Um, okay. So it might be showing up under David Rickard's name. Yeah, it is. All right. And there's two Okay. There's oh, two okay. Yeah, yeah. Still I see it now. Okay. I, yeah, we got to make that clear so that uh, we have it for the record. Yeah. So for the record, uh, who was speaking on behalf of North Point Development is Brian Roslin, B-R-Y-A-N, last name R-O-S-L-U-N-D. Okay. All right. Uh, attendees. Peter, do you recognize any of these people? Nope, but let's allow them to talk and see what's going on. Okay. Are you doing that? Yep. Okay. I don't want to bump them off. <laughs> oh, that... <laughs> nope. Somebody got bumped. I didn't do it. <laughs> uh, hey, hey, Peter, this is Tim Andurko, uh, also with Langen on the, the development team. Okay, Just thank in you. As a spectator this evening. Okay. Do, do you know who that other person was? No, I, I can't see the uh, the other list. Oh, no, Just, no, I, uh, you're right. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, I, I apologize if we bumped uh, that that person. Um, I believe the last name was Nielsen. Niels? It was a hyphenated name, I thought. Yeah. Uh, slash name. Looked like two, diff two people who shared the same. Yeah. Well, we have to be careful because if you... Um, exit someone from the meeting they cannot come back yes. okay all right so no questions from the public uh questions from the commission any questions mm -hmm. 
see. I have one. And clarification. Um, so the area number nine, was that something that was not picked up in the last um, wetlands boundary? Or did they do something that created new wetlands? So it was, it was an area, again, Dean Gustafson from all points, that area was previously identified as uplands. It was kind of an upland island um, that originally projected all the way to the north. That projection was cut off by the wetland creation area. So that was new wetland areas. And there's also some transitional areas um, around the surrounding wetland boundaries. So what we found was that there was a small, relatively small upland inclusion within that area. And we made a determination not to delineate it because it had no bearing on the proposed project. It was interior to all the wetland resources buffered by quite a bit of distance. Um, so it was just a small upland area. So we're, overall what we're doing is in the aggregate showing more wetlands than what was previously approved. Okay, so the, back to my question, was it not picked up in the last meeting, last uh, in 2017? or was the, it altered during this period? It, it was essentially altered by the wetland creation area, which was originally uplands and okay. part of a larger upland area. So that area was used for this uh, this new wetland creation area. Okay, that makes sense. All right, any other questions from the commission? I had a quick one, Mr. Chairman. Sure. Peter, um, when you mentioned that wetland number two um, is intercepting some groundwater on the downstream side. What's the effect of that overall? Does that create anything new in that area that we need to be aware of? Yeah, I, I think that that comment was made by Mr. Gustafson, who's more qualified to answer your question. Thank you, Mr. Gustafson. Yeah, so that's one of the created stormwater basins and through their excavation of upland soils in that area, they intercepted the seasonal high groundwater table. And that's what's creating now what's man-made wetland hydrology. And um, it's now exhibiting wetland characteristics to the degree that it, it it's qualifies as a defined wetland feature. Yeah, I, I think it's also important to remember um, this site soils, uh, underlying soils are sandy in nature. And so um, they have uh, they have a high groundwater table, um, partly because they're so sandy. And the groundwater table, I think, fluctuates quite a bit uh, because of that. But it's sometimes higher than you would guess, I think just because of the nature of the soils. Yeah, that's, that's correct, Peter. What you have for superficial geology out here is you have glacial fluvial material, which is uh, sandy outwash material, and that's underlaid by glacial uh, lacustrine or glacial lake bed deposits, which are fine silts and clays. And so what that's creating is, is kind of a shallow perch water table in certain parts of the property. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Okay, no other questions. Uh, any final comments from the public? Nothing. Final comments from the commission. Um, I just wanna make sure we're all clear. Um, the applicant agrees with the modifications of uh, the flagging of the wetlands as Peter described? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. And um, any last comments from the applicant? Nope, I think we're, we're satisfied with this discussion and the conditions of approval. Thank you. All right. Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Made by Kevin Wilcox, seconded by? Seconded. Katie? 
I think Adam. Adam? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. <coughs> that was to close the public hearing. Now we need a motion to approve the wetland boundary changes. You want to go for it, Kevin? I was hoping Katie would do it. <laughs> All right. He wasn't here last week. I wasn't. Um, I think I took enough notes to get that uh, additional condition in there. Wait, wait. Does Nadine want to go for it? Oh, oh. No, no I don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. I'd like to make a motion to approve the wetlands map amendment application of North Point Development LLC 90 um, 116 West Dudley Town Road, MBL 16 43, owner of Connecticut Valley Properties 3 LLC. Um, based on staff comments and conditions listed therein. Also recognizing an additional condition to reestablish flags that are close to current development activities in accordance with land dated. Uh, I have 12-8. 12-8, 2022. Uh, you, you should have received a full size folded up plan in your packets. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's bigger yeah. than my desk. Yep. That's 12 8 22. Okay. Anything else I should include that I didn't mention? No. Okay. That's the motion. All right. Is there a second? Second. Oh, now you jump up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, second by Kevin. Um, any dis further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Oppo opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Okay. Item number two, permit application. That's a public hearing also. So we need a motion to open the public hearing for a permit application for North Point Development. So moved. Made by Kevin, seconded by Second. Adam. And uh, all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Abstain? It's unanimous. Okay. Public hearing is open. Uh, who is here for the applicant? Mr. Chairman, I'll, I'll get things started. Okay. Good evening. Again, this is Tom Cody with Robinson and Cole, legal counsel to the applicant, North Point Development, LLC. Um, and we're, we're pleased to now be able to present to you um, this wetland permit application for the project that North Point um, would like to develop at the site. So as you heard during the wetland map amendment application, the property is currently owned by Connecticut Valley Properties 3 LLC and has been um, developed and is operated by the Butler Company. The property currently has a 15,750 square foot industrial building and the site is actively used for material stockpiles, processing and equipment storage um, for the Butler Company. North Point seeks to redevelop the property with the construction of a warehouse building with a footprint of approximately 522,000 square feet together with associated facilities, including loading docks, trailer parking spaces, associate parking spaces, and associated improvements such as drainage utilities, grading and landscaping. Um, our presentation this evening is going to take you through um, the existing conditions of the site, including the regulated resources at the site, 
will describe for you the proposed project. And we will also describe um, the impact analysis that's been completed by All Points Technology Corporation. I think what you will hear, um, one of the main themes of our presentation is that the North Point application has worked, the, the professional team has worked very hard to design this project to limit the proposed development activities to the approved limits of disturbance that were already approved in association with the Butler Company wetland permit that was approved in 2017. So we'll start again with Dean Gustafson with All Points Technology. And after Dean reviews the resources at the property, David Gagnon with Langan Engineering will describe for you uh, the details of the of the project and uh, Dean will conclude with um, thoughts about some of the mitigation efforts that are proposed and a wrap up of his conclusions about the wetland impact assessment. So with that I'll turn it over to Dean Gustafson. Great thank you Tom. Um, good evening folks my name is Dean Gustafson I'm a professional soil scientist senior wetland scientist with All Points Technology Corporation PC of Waterford Connecticut. Um, it's been a few years since I've uh, presented a development project in front of this commission, so I'll just briefly go over my qualifications. I've been a wetland consultant in Connecticut for going on 35 years. I maintain registrations with the Soil Science Society of Southern New England, Connecticut Association of Wetland Scientists, and the Association of Massachusetts Wetland Scientists. And like yourselves, I also volunteer my time as a member of the Lebanon Connecticut Inland Wetland Commission, uh, where I've been a member for the last 28 years. And so I commend you all on volunteering your time to protect Bloomfield's wetland resources. And so with that introduction, I'll get into um, the presentation. Dave, if you can bring up the slide deck. So this is just the kind of the overview sheet of uh, the project as uh, Tom had already summarized. Um, so we can skip over that and get to the second slide. Thank you, Dave. So there will be a little bit of repetition from the uh, discussion from the wetland map amendment application. Um, so just bear with me and, and I'll take your point, uh, Mr. Chairman, just to be direct, um, but we are required by statute and your regulations to repeat some of this information since this is a separate application and public hearing. So from a historical context, the property and its wetlands were subject to a previous wetland map amendment that was approved by this commission uh, back in March 2017. That was file number 75-2017-03 as well as a wetland application that including the Crowley Butler operation uh, that was also approved uh, the same, generally the same date uh, under file number 75-2017-04. So those approved activities resulted in wetland change to the current site conditions as compared to the original map amendment approval. Uh, and so I'll just briefly go over those uh, items. Um, Dave, if you can go. So what what this map shows um, before I jump over to the next one, it shows the previously approved uh, wetland map amendment, uh, the wetland conditions at the time prior to the development activities for the Butler operation and the proposed Butler development areas. So you have um, it shows all the, the three main stormwater basins kind of da and dashed lines um, that are in the kind of perimeter of the site to the west and to the south. Uh, cross hatched areas are for material storage and lay down areas, equipment storage as well. And then um, in the north east corner of the site uh, were a few buildings that were proposed, uh, including a corporate headquarter uh, office building, um, which were never constructed. Under current conditions, that area is all uh, has been graded and leveled. Um, it's used for uh, material uh, lay down and, and stockpile areas currently. 
Before we jump to the next sheet, uh, I think it's also important to note that the Butler approval did not include the westerly most parts of this site, including the existing building and the rectangular area to the south of that. Right. So those those parts are now part of this application. They were not included in the Butler application. The, yep. Nope. Thank, thank you for pointing that out, Peter. Um, and so the other item just to point out to the commission is the the upland review area um, are also depicted on this map. And to Peter's point for that um, that development area that that wasn't part of the Butler, that area is located outside the upland review area. Uh, that's the vacant building on uh, West Dudley. I'm not sure that it's vacant, but it's the, yeah, it's the only one on that side of the street. Yeah. This okay, part. Yeah. All right. yeah, I don't, I do believe that it's at least partially occupied, but it is, that is the building you're referencing. Okay. Um, if there are no further questions, we'll move on to the next slide. All right. Sorry. Thank you. Oh, no, no. You're welcome. So here again, just shows more detailed of the proposed Butler uh, development, uh, shows proposed grade, grade lines, shows all the wetland resources, the upland review areas. Um, one thing to kind of note on this particular plan um, that was part of the Butler uh, approved project, the areas that are highlighted in blue are where there were uh, direct wetland impacts. Um, those are most notably associated with the three isolated wetlands, uh, but there were also direct wetland impacts associated with outfalls from the three stormwater basins. Um, so those outfall structures uh, resulted in relatively minor, but also some uh, some direct wetland impacts to create that transition from a controlled outfall into the receiving wetland areas. The areas that are highlighted in tan show proposed development within the upland review areas um, as part of this previous project. And so it, it, it generally represents existing site conditions as they've been developed and disturbed. Um, so the only thing to kind of point out to the commission is that, you know, there was, uh, in addition to some direct wetland impacts, there was activity that was approved within the upland review areas to uh, essentially all of the wetland uh, features on this property. Next slide, please. So this is just another overview map showing the, the site to put it in context with the surrounding industrial commercial developments. Um, this is important from a wetland assessment perspective and I'll just pause briefly here. Everything that I'm discussing tonight uh, is contained in our wetland assessment report that's been submitted as part of this permit application. So if, um, if the commission's you know, read through it in detail, if they wanna go back through it after this hearing, they'll, there's, there's a little bit more depth to our discussion provided in that report as required by your regulations, but this presentation, everything I'm talking about is contained within that report. So this, as I mentioned, showing this context of the site and the surrounding development is important from a, a wetland assessment perspective since the existing site conditions and their approved wetland alterations in combination with the surrounding developments have resulted in some degradation of wetland habitats on the project site and their ability to provide typical functions and values. And, and that's generally you know, a result of the approved development, um, the, the current site conditions um, associated with that approved development, and also the, the relatively high level of human activity that surrounds this property, um, predominantly associated with not only the site um, activities, but also the activities on uh, the surrounding developed properties uh, along West Dudley, particularly along West Dudley Town Road, as well as to a certain degree along Blue Hills Avenue. Next slide, please. So 
So this is a slide that you saw during the uh, MAP amendment uh, presentation. This shows the existing site conditions. I believe this aerial photo was from the fall of last year. Uh, it's relatively representative of current site conditions, although you know Butler continues with their material uh, storage and sorting operations. So there are some, some differences uh, to this map. But as far as the existing limit of disturbance or limit of development, um, is essentially the same as what's shown in this map. What it really relates to is, you know, there are, are different piles, um, different equipment, um, as you would expect on a, a construction, um, you know, storage yard like this. So this, uh, and in uh, the heavy yellow dashed line, uh, those represent the, uh, the approved wetland boundaries um, that were, um, discussed during the, the recent MAP amendment application that was approved by the commission. Next slide, please. So this map highlights the, the wetland features on the site. Um, we, for descriptive purposes, we uh, provide number identifications to them. And that correlates with our discussion of the different wetland resources. So. I'll just provide an, an overview of, of kind of the, the characteristics of each wetland um, and their uh, really their important functions and values that they're currently supporting. So in the, the far western end of the site, north and northern side is uh, identified as wetland one. This is a forest, a swamp um, that is contained within kind of a shallow topographic depression on the landscape. Um, adjacent to uh, West Elde Town Road, both kind of to the north and more closely to the west. Uh, this system, system is bordered by a narrow, disturbed upland forest and a constructed stormwater basin, which, I, which we've partially identified as Wetland 2. Uh, that basin continues to wrap around the eastern side of wetland one, uh, close to the northern tip of that wetland system. Uh, poorly drained silt and clay sediments within the subsoil contribute to the saturated wetland hydrology, uh, during particularly during periods of increased precipitation activity and annual cyclical events, uh, meteorological events. It, the, the secondary and principal uh, functions consist of water quality renovation, and wildlife habitat that are supported at a secondary level. Um, we've combined the, the created stormwater wetland systems, wetlands two, wetland three, and wetland six. Um, they're all very similar in nature, morphology, and hydrology. So we're describing them as, as, a one, as one wetland unit, um, just for descriptive purposes and discussion. So all three of those wetland areas are constructed stormwater basins uh, positioned within close proximity to um, natural wetland system complexes on the property. Their primary function is to retain on-site generated stormwater prior to infiltrating to the ground or discharging to neighboring wetland systems. Uh, and due to the prolonged period of artificial flooding, these basins now function as wet meadow wetland type habitats with small areas of short duration interior inundation. They're, the function values that these systems provide are uh, primarily water quality renovation at a principal level. I mean, that's, that was the intended design as a stormwater basin. So it's providing that function at a high level. And then secondarily a, as wildlife habitat. And that's mainly associated with the wet meadow vegetation that's being supported by these features. Wetland 4 is located centrally on the site in the southern region of the property. Um, it is characterized predominantly as a red maple dominant forest with bordering scrub shrub vegetation. Uh, within the northern interior, uh, a wetland creation area that was partially constructed as part of the 2017 Butler permit approval consists of wet meadow habitat that's connected to the adjacent forest and wetland habitat to the east, to the west, and to the south. This wetland is seasonally saturated with seepage emerging from the shallow sloping topography. 
and the this complex drains to the south and southeast offsite into a larger forested wetland system that eventually drains into an unnamed perennial stream repairing corridor, um, which is noted as wetland five. So the the function and values that wetland four predominantly supports is water quality renovation at a secondary level and then wildlife habitat at a principal level. Um, and finally, wetland five is located in the far southeastern corner of the site. This is associated with unnamed uh, intermittent and perennial watercourse system with boring seepage uh, forested uh, wetlands uh, that are relatively narrow um, to the stream system. Um, the, the stream is approximately three foot wide uh, mucky organic bottom channel with poor structure. By, by reference of poor structure, I mean it, it lacks um, good pool and ripple structure um, for uh, aquatic organisms. And as um, you heard during the previous application, that system is bifurcated uh, kind of in the north end of that delineated feature by an historic farm road um, that consists of intermixed gravel and cobble fill material and a 24 inch culvert that divides that open air stream system. Um, the functions of value supported by wetland five are principally water quality renovation functions. Um, there's a little bit of flood storage attenuation uh, capacity at secondary level and then also wildlife habitat is provided at a secondary level. Next slide, please. So the next couple of slides just kind of show representative photographs of the site, um, the existing operations and development. Um, in these slides in the upper right-hand corner is a key showing the location of those photos and the direction of view. Uh, photo one shows an overview uh, looking west uh, from an area just west of wetland six. And then photo two is the same point, but it's looking south um, from the area west of wetland, same photo location, west of wetland six. And this really just shows kind of the, the existing Butler operation, uh, the cleared level disturbed areas, uh, the existing you know, material piles and um, material handling piles, as well as some of the equipment uh, that's stored on site. Next slide, please. So this is another kind of overviews of, of the site conditions. Um, these four photographs, um, which are number three through six, um, kind of show the interior of the site um, and operations that are within the upland review area and in, in some areas that are in close proximity to some of the nearby wetland resource areas. So here again, to show some of the material uh, storage and processing operations by Butler, as well as uh, equipment and trailers that are stored on site. Next photo, please. Um, these, this deck of photos uh, focuses more on some of the, the wetland features, in particular the, the stormwater basins that are uh, now classified as wetlands. In the upper left hand side we see a, an overview photo of, of wetland, a photo of, of wetland two, uh, located in the far western end of the site. Um, the photo to the right of that is shows wetland three, which is a large um, wet meadow uh, habitat. You can see some cattails in the left-hand side of that photograph. And kind of center of that photograph is actually the outfall structure of wetland three that eventually is piped underground and discharges to adjacent wetland four, um, kind of in the southern, uh, near the southern property boundary. The photograph in the bottom left is um, the, the, the steeper and deeper stormwater basin located in the south end of the site, uh, kind of southeastern corner of the site. Um, that shows the graded slope. And then at the bottom of that, 
uh, kind of the left-hand side of the photograph is um, some of the wetland vegetation in that basin. And then wetland four is looking uh, essentially to the southwest um, from the limit of uh, clearing, and that shows the wetland creation area. Um, next slide, please. So with this, I'll hand it over to Dave Gagnon from Langen Engineering, and he can talk about the proposed uh, project. Sure. Thank you, Dean. Um, for the record, my name is David Gagnon. I'm a civil engineer. Um, I work for Langen Engineering. I'm here representing the applicant, uh, North Point Development. Um, I'm going to run you through the proposed conditions um, and some of the uh, enhancements that we're proposing with our project. Um, and just for perspective, uh, north is to the right on this sheet. So our project site is 56 acres. Um, we're currently zoned in the I-2 industrial zone. Um, what we are proposing is a roughly 522,000 square foot warehouse. Um, there are loading docks on both sides of this warehouse on the west side and on the east side. Um, both, there'll be trailer spaces on, on both sides, both the west side on West Dudley and on the east side of the building, uh, kind of behind the development over here. Uh, the majority of our trailer spaces will be on the, on the back side of the property. Employee and associate parking will be on both the north side here um, and the south side of our property. A vehicular access to the property is through one of three locations. There are two curb cuts we're proposing on West Dudley Town Road. Uh, and the intent of these two curb cuts is primarily um, trucking and employee access. There'll be a third access point on um, the south end of the, the property, which is West Dudley on the left side of the sheet. This is really a secondary access. Uh, the intent of this road is for more uh, emergency vehicles uh, and associates. Um, we see some truck trips here, but the majority will be on West Dudley Town Road. Um, part of our project, we are proposing um, a number of improvements, uh, which will include landscaping throughout the site. Um, there's gonna be a dense vegetated buffer on the west end of the property, screening the property from West Dudley Town Road. Um, and we also are proposing uh, landscaping throughout the parking areas um, and wetland plantings in all of the um, impact, impacted wetland areas, which I'll discuss. Um, from a stormwater perspective, uh, we have a number of um, variety of treatments that we're gonna be using in our treatment train, uh, which I'll get into. Um, primarily, we are looking to um, enhance and reuse the three existing basins as our discharge point. Um, and to do that, we had to expand the capacity um, of the three basins. Um, we, we were looking to improve the functionality and the water quality through uh, new wetland plantings in all three of these uh, new basins. Um, also, as discussed, there is a, a wetland creation area, which is um, on the eastern edge of the site here, which we will be um, improving, which Dean will go into in a little more detail. So that's a high level overview of our proposed project. Um, and I'll get into our, our stormwater design next. Um, so this next slide here gives you an overview, or I'll, I'll let it load if it hasn't loaded. Um, this next slide here gives you an overview of our proposed stormwater management. Um, we think we have a, a robust design that will provide water quality. Um, just to give you some kind of high level uh, pointers of what we're proposing, we have a, um, a robust treatment train, which will include two rain gardens here on the south end of the property in green. Um, we'll have three open bottom um, subsurface infiltration systems. Um, that's in purple here. So you have one, two, three. Um, all of them will be open bottom to promote groundwater recharge and infiltration. Um, we have five water quality units. Um, these water quality units will be essentially swirl separators, which will further help um, remove pollutants and silts out of the, uh, out of the stream. 
Um, these are shown here in these pinkish circles. Um, before discharge to any one of these basins, we have either water quality unit, and before discharge into um, our underground detention systems, we also have water quality units. Um, in addition to that, um, we spoke about the three existing stormwater features, which we will be uh, modifying and improving. The two basins on the south end, we will be uh, converting into a micro pool. Um, this will give um, kind of uh, expanded wetland area and the opportunity for additional wetland plantings. Um, the basin on uh, the east end of the property, um, shown in yellow here, is an existing dry detention basin. Um, while this basin had the capacity that we needed, it did not have a four bay. Uh, and it's common practice for a basin to have a four bay. So our thought was to um, replant this basin, install a sediment four bay to help with water quality uh, prior to discharge. Um, I'll let this load. Um, this next slide here uh, illustrates our um, direct wetland impacts and our activities in the upland review. Uh, as discussed, our direct wetland impacts are restricted to the um, three former detention basins, which we'll be improving. Uh, one, two, three. There's the wetland creation area, um, which our wetland scientists will um, discuss in more detail coming up. Um, and we also have isolated areas at the outfall um, of these attention basins. And we really just want to um, clean up the outfall, make sure had proper stabilization and the pipe was clean. So we're asking for um, the opportunity to work in that area. And one of the goals of this project was really to stay within um, the current limits of the disturbance. You've seen some of the aerials. Uh, we really didn't want to expand beyond that. We tried to keep it to what's already disturbed. Um, and if, with that, I, I, th I thought it would be a good opportunity to, um, if Dean, you want to discuss our wetland recreation area, which is shown here in blue. Looks like it might be loading. Yeah, no, I'd be happy to, Dave. Actually, if you could just jump back to the wetland impact plan, I just want to point out a couple of things sure. to the commission um, for our regulated, proposed regulated activities. So as David already mentioned, you know, by and large, most of the direct wetland impacts that are proposed in the man-made wetland stormwater basins, uh, and then the wetland creation area. So from a, a regulated activities perspective, the commission can view these as, as temporary impacts since the project will not be eliminating these jurisdictional areas. Uh, we're actually enhancing these areas and they'll still function um, as wetland features, um, but with enhanced functions and values after uh, the proposed modifications. Um, and as David indicated, you know, the, the three stormwater basins will be enhanced to improve their stormwater renovation functions. Well, uh, at the same time, uh, through uh, creating some diverse uh, wetland habitat and planting zones, we'll create diverse wetland habitats um, with varying hydraulic regimes and with wetland emergent and aquatic, aquatic habitats. And that will end up providing an overall improvement uh, to the wildlife habitat function within these areas, as well as improving um, the functions of the surrounding wetland areas and upland review areas. Um, as David noted, you know, the main goal of the proposed development was to stay within the basic footprint of the previously approved development. And, and that was part of our alternatives analysis um, as, as required by your regulations to review, you know, other alternatives that would uh, result in, in avoidance or less overall regulated activities. And so we've satisfied that requirement by, you know, taking that into context with what was previously approved by the commission and to ensure that what we were doing was not further degrading wetland resources in the surrounding perimeter of the development 
and to maintain the existing limit of disturbance so that we're not, uh, it does, the project doesn't result in additional activities or clearing within the upland review areas that uh, surround these wetland features. So um, the proposed pro uh, development plan that we're proposing to you is considered the most prudent feasible alternative. Um, all right, you can move to the next slide, please. Thanks, Dave. So just, I'll get into a more detailed discussion of the wetland creation area, but just by example, you know, the nearby basin, um, just to the west of the wetland creation area, which is boxed in blue, you know, you can see in that grading plan that, that Langen has designed uh, varying uh, micro pools and features low marsh and high marsh habitat areas that no, not only do a better job of renovating stormwater quality than existing conditions, but through creating those various hydraulic regimes in the wetland system, you provide an opportunity to develop different wetland habitats. Uh, you can develop uh, aquatic and semi-aquatic habitats within those pool areas and along the benches of those pools. And then um, a little bit higher elevations, you can develop high marsh and low marsh habitat. So it ended up that diversity uh, in varying wetland habitats um, has a direct relationship on improving wildlife habitat functions. Now, typically for a stormwater basin, you know, you don't really think about trying to achieve those goals, but through this design and these extended stormwater wetland basins, um, it gives you the ability to not only provide a high level of stormwater renovation, but also provide um, wildlife habitat that will support uh, existing nearby wetland habitat and create ecologically from a, an overall site standpoint, improving uh, wildlife habitat across the subject property. For the wetland creation area, there were a couple of uh, deficiencies in the Butler approved uh, wetland development uh, application uh, and the permit that was granted. Um, what we did was we looked at that area carefully when we were doing the wetland delineation field work. And then we worked closely with the survey, um, the topographic survey that Langen performed in that area to compare it to the existing grades and what was proposed grades within that wetland system. And through that detailed analysis, we, we discovered a couple of uh, deficiencies um, that aren't hitting the goals that were originally uh, approved by in the Butler uh, application or the Butler permit, wetland permit. Most notably, the, the existing grades are about one to two feet higher than what was in the approved grading plan. Um, that difference wasn't enough to uh, have this area function as a as an upland. It's it still hey, has characteristics to be technically classified as a wetland, but it doesn't um, meet those goals. And those goals are important uh, because the original intent was to create a diverse. Uh, wetland habitat that has different hydraulic regimes. So some of the, the um, lower grades that were supposed to have been excavated deeper were supposed to create some shallow inundation, some micro pool habitat. Uh, and because of the existing conditions, it never uh, satisfied that requirement. The other deficiency is that there's insufficient wetland topsoil um, throughout this wetland creation area. The, the plan that was approved spec'd at least a minimum of 10 inches of wetland topsoil. We dug several test pit holes um, by hand throughout this wetland creation area, and, and on average, there's about six inches. So um, there's about a delta of about four inches of wetland topsoil that needs to be placed in that area. And then finally, it's, it's a wet meadow habitat. It was originally designed to be um, kind of a compilation between a forested and a scrub shrub wetland. Um, there were numerous plantings that were approved by uh, the permit um, native trees and, and wetland shrubs uh, that were never planted. So this, what we proposed with the, the planting schedule and details that are part of your package and part of the plan set 
we are going to make corrections to all those deficiencies so that at the end of the day, we'll have a very high functioning new wetland area um, that will help compensate for not only what was originally approved for direct wetland impacts by the Butler application, but also for the project's unavoidable uh, regulated activities that are par as part of this application. Uh, next slide, please. Yeah, I think you can jump to the next slide. I think. Great, thanks, Dave. So uh, on sheet LP 502, um, there are not only are there details on the, the planting schedule um, for the extended stormwater wetland basins, but um, most notably, there are details for um, making the improvements that I just summarized for the wetland creation area. Uh, and here we have a detailed sequence notes for construction uh, sequencing. Um, the particulars as far as um, providing the appropriate grades, um, the appropriate depth of wetland topsoil, uh, and also the planting of um, the forested and scrub shrub wetland habitats with the uh, noted native plants in that planting schedule. Um, so the last part of the, the notes section deals with um, not only monitoring by a wetland scientist during construction or re let's say reconstruction of this wetland creation area uh, to ensure that uh, we're satisfying all the requirements in this plan, but there's also a long-term five-year post-construction monitoring period that'll be implemented by, uh, again, a wetland scientist to ensure that the wetland creation area is successfully attaining all the goals noted um, in the performance standards. Um, the other aspects of our comprehensive wetland mitigation plan are in addition to this wetland creation area, we have we are providing some um, sandy terrestrial habitat enhancements um, in some of the surrounding uh, upland areas within the upland review areas to mainly in the southern portion of the site uh, adjacent to essentially between wetlands four and five. Um, that habitat is important for um, some rare upland species um, that were noted through our consultation with the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protections National Diversity Database. Um, those enhancements will not only um, support those rare species, but will also provide important habitat for um, you know, amphibians and, and turtles that may be nesting in the area. So uh, that provides some enhancement to what is currently right now is is um, an area that's been graded and, and disturbed as part of the Butler activity. So that provides some additional enhancements. And then finally, we are um, proposing a wetland protection program to be implemented during construction. And what that generally entails, and we have details in our wetland assessment report, is that we first uh, hold a pre-construction uh, meeting with uh, the site contractor, the civil contractors and the project, make sure that they're aware of where the sensitive wetland resources areas are, um, the importance of protecting those resources during the course of construction activities so that there isn't any incidental impacts um, or temporary impacts during construction. Um, we will independently review the perimeter um, erosion sedimentation controls uh, for protection of wetland resource areas um, before they, they start with uh, the heavy earthwork. And then we will provide periodic monitoring uh, during the course of the construction um, schedule to ensure that the uh, contractor is maintaining sensitivity to those nearby wetland resources and that those perimeter controls are being properly maintained um, to avoid any incidental um, impacts. Um, yeah, we can go to the last slide. So 
So in, in summary, the proposed facility has been thoughtfully designed to avoid minimized direct wetland impacts while also minimizing encroachment into upland review areas uh, while satisfying the building program needs. The proposed project limits act in its activities within the approved limits of the disturbance associated with the previously approved wetland permit uh, for the existing Butler development. Uh, and that was intentionally done to uh, avoid any additional regulated activities as part of this project and to essentially maintain that, uh, that approved limited disturbance line. As discussed, the, the work proposed within wetlands are isolated to existing man-made stormwater basins that will be functionally improved, as well as to the improving the uh, existing wetland creation area. Um, so as I indicated earlier, I think from a, a regulated activity standpoint, the commission could consider those as temporary um, direct activities um, because we're not uh, removing any wetland resources from the site, we're only enhancing those areas. Uh, as to start the, discuss the, you know, the design considerations and the various mitigation strategies, the proposed project represents the most prudent feasible alternative and will not result in a likely adverse, adverse impact to nearby wetland resources. Um, to compensate for unavoidable uh, regulated activities, a comprehensive and extensive mitigation uh, program has been designed to compensate for these unavoidable impacts. And in totality, the mitigation plan will more than compensate for the project's unavoidable activities. In addition to preserving extension area, extensive areas of wetlands and upland review areas, important terrestrial habitat will be protected that serve multiple wildlife habitat functions. And as a result, the project will not diminish the wetland resources within the town of Bloomfield, either on site or downstream of the site. So the applicant respectfully requests that the, the commission find that these measures adequately protective of the interests of the act and your regulations and issue a wetland permit for approving the project. Uh, that is the conclusion of our presentation. I hand it back to the chairman and our team is available for questions. Thank you. Thank you. Peter, do you have a, a staff report? Yes, uh, I have a preliminary staff report uh, dated January 11th. Sorry, January 12th. Was that in our package? Yes, should be almost the, the last pages of the stapled together agenda. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So um, I, this is a preliminary review because I think there's some additional information that is, is needed. Um, my... Uh, uh, you know, my my review of this project was also limited because of the um, special meeting we had uh, a week ago Monday with this commission that uh, really limited my my time to do my usual in depth review. So for those two reasons, I'm recommending that the commission keep the public hearing open and uh, table the application to the February twenty first meeting which is the next regular meeting again on a tuesday night in february um but some of the other uh, additional information uh that i am requesting uh includes a uh the wetlands creation area plan which is referenced in mr uh gustafson's report as sheet cg 201 uh were and was that sheet presented tonight that particular sheet, Mr. Gagnon? Uh, I can um, I can jump in real quick and then, sorry, Dave, to cut you off. And then Dave can can weigh in as well. So we, and I saw your, the email you sent with that, your um, preliminary report. And I responded to that the other day, making note that, that that material that was referenced on that singular sheet was actually ended up being split over two sheets. Um, so that information is contained in the project plan set. Uh, we can certainly consolidate that information to, into one wetland uh, creation plan um, sheet if it makes it easier for the, the commission to kind of review that material. But the, the material, all the material is contained within the, within the plan set. Okay. Um, there was uh, the second thing on my list was an alternatives analysis. And I know that there was some discussion uh, about uh, alternatives. 
However, our, our regulations say that the alternatives need the other alternatives need to be presented. So, um, the uh, uh, you know it, it doesn't have to be um, uh, it doesn't have to be a, uh, a full full blown uh, development plan, but you know, we, we should see, uh, you know, at least two other, this is, these are some of the other things we were thinking, but we ended up here thinking, and that this is the best one. Um, the other one is, uh, I'm, I'm requesting uh, additional information for the erosion control plans, uh, including um, plans at 40 scale and plans for uh, the various phases. Um, of the project, uh, one of which will be, I think, the removal of all of you know all of the existing material out there. And there's a large variety and a large quantity of material out there. Um, and certainly, uh, getting the site ready for the development, which we normally call the, call the uh, earthwork phase, will include most of the work in the uh, created wetland areas in the in the old stormwater basins I mean in the present stormwater basins um, number four was uh, estimated earthwork volumes to get a you know clue as to how much material uh, will need to be removed starting at the base ground level after what's out there now is removed um, you know how much uh, excavation is going to be needed for the foundations for the building for the underground utilities, et cetera. Um, so um, number five was geotechnical borings and logs, uh, if any have been done. And I'm sorry, I know Mr. Augustuson responded to these, um, to me by email, but I don't, I don't have his response here in front of me. Were geotechnical borings done? Anybody know? Uh yeah, I could answer that. This is Dave Gagnon with Langan Engineering. Yes, there was a geotechnical investigation that was done on this project. Okay, so typically they do a report and we, we just would like to have that for the record um, and to show where the borings were on the site plans, not just in the report. Um, number six really is a repeat of number two. Um, preferred alternatives comparing at least two others. Um, seven is a stormwater pro pollution prevention plan uh, in accordance with the stormwater quality manual. This would be for the site after development. Uh, and then uh, I, I'm asking for some additional erosion and ro soil erosion and sediment control measures in accordance with, with the uh, erosion control manual. Um, I think there's there's at least a dozen of them called out on the plan and I'm asking for a, a three or four more. Um, I don't have them right here in front of me, but uh, one of the things that's important on this site is keep in mind the, uh, the um, uh, existing subsoils, which are, uh, because they're sandy, are very erodible, easily erodible. Um, and then I also, uh, stated in my staff report, the applicant is requested to consider the following alternatives. Um, one is uh, reducing the direct wetland impacts. And I think the commission should know that the direct wetland, the majority of the direct wetland impacts they're proposing are within the constructed stormwater basins. So their, their impacts to those regulated areas. Um, but that, that also reminded me of another question. The stormwater basins um, are going to be uh, utilized. The three basins that are there will be modified and utilized for the developed site. But I also noted that your site plan showed underground stormwater detention as well. Are you including uh, infiltration in those stormwater basins? And will I mean, some of the site, if it goes into the underground storm water detention um, and, and uh, um, infiltrates into the ground, wouldn't necessarily be included in the overall size of the stormwater basins. So I guess that's a question for Mr. Gagnon. 
you need both? Um, sure, that's a great question. So um, in our model, conservatively, we did not assume infiltration in these uh, underground deten detention systems. I think you will get some, um, but we wanted to be conservative and, and over oversize our system. So uh, we did not account for infiltration, even though I think in reality, you will get some groundwater recharge from these systems. Okay, yeah, because typically they're, um, they're underground galleys, but they have a, a crushed stone floor, mm -hmm. right? And they have crushed stone around them, but the crushed stone floor is, the, uh, is what they sit on. So that would certainly allow some infiltration. Okay, um, the other one was, uh, or the other bunch of them for considering following alternatives uh, would be to reduce the impacts to the upland review areas. If they can reduce the direct wetland impacts, automatically you would get um, less upland review area impact, as well as less vegetated buffer zone impacts, which is number three. Um, number four is reducing the amount of uh, impervious coverage. And, and I think there's some opportunity here for some uh, grass pavers or actually pervious pavement, perhaps in the car parking areas. Uh, which would reduce the amount of impervious coverage. Um, and I wrote uh, number five, mitigation in the form of restored, enhanced, or created wetland or water course. It should say resources after that. Um, and they're, they are proposing uh, to do that, uh, particularly in the area of the previously approved wetland uh, creation area, which really didn't get created. Um, the same goes for mitigation in the form of enhanced vegetated buffers. Um, we didn't review the, the replanting plan or the planting plan, but there are some, uh, there are some disturbances uh, within the vegetated buffer zone. You may not have forest vegetation on them now, but it's within the zone. And if those, uh, um, you know, if those, uh, uh, areas within the zone uh, or, or neighboring wetland can be uh, planted up, that would in, be an enhanced vegetative buffer. Similarly, mitigation in the form of enhanced wildlife habitat. I, I think I learned tonight that they're proposing to keep some grass land uh, as, as, uh, you know, as a form of, uh, uh, of enhanced wildlife habitat. And I think that's great. Um, and then uh, low impact development strategies and infrastructure, some I mentioned uh, already, um, but I'll mention them again because they're in my report, in, uh, including stormwater infiltration, pervious pavement, and a, and a green roof. Uh, I don't know if the development team has considered building um, something other than a flat roof, a uh, regular flat roof on this building, but that's a big building. Um, and it, uh, I mean, it should also be noted that the building is a, a little smaller, but about the same in scope as the um, warehouse that was built for uh, Trader Joe's on Phoenix Crossing. So that's kind of the scope of the, of the development. It's, it's big. I think, I think uh, that other project had more land uh, but similar soils, and they have really big stormwater basins, um, you know, bigger than the ones proportionally that are proposed here. Um, so I guess I should also mention that the, the town engineering department, or the town engineer, I'm sorry, is is reviewing the uh, is reviewing the submitted stormwater um, stormwater uh, uh, report, and if there are any recommendations. Um, from the town engineer, they will be forwarded to the applicant as well. Um, I also typically send out a, uh, a list of recommended plan revisions, and I'm going to do that as well, uh, um, assuming that the commission takes my recommendation to table the application and continue the public hearing to the February 21st regular meeting. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. That's all I have. Thank you, Peter. Uh, any questions from the public? I think you have to raise your hand. 
Uh, Thomas Duke, do we know him? Thomas, are you uh, here for a public hearing? Does he know he's on mute? Yeah, he's on mute. <clears throat> Um, well, he, he may also be out of the room at the moment, not realize that he's uh, being talked to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was thinking the can same we thing. Circle, can we circle back to him? Yeah, I guess we will. Um, any questions from the commission? Uh, I, I don't necessarily have questions. I have a couple suggestions, and they're going to be quick ones. Uh, is there anybody on staff with us tonight that is responsible for landscaping or the landscape design? From the applicant. From the applicant. Yeah, so my office did the landscape plan. Um, I'm a civil engineer. I'm not the landscape architect, but I might be able to um, answer some of your questions if you have any. Uh, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have questions. I have suggestions. Uh, sure. Just to give you a quick overview. I'm a horticulturalist. I've been uh, growing trees and shrubs for the last 38 years. And um, there are a couple of things that I noticed about the plant schedule and the plants that you're using. One, they're all native to Connecticut. Thank you. That's a great thing. Uh, however, the uses on at least two or three of these plants may not be uh, something that will succeed for you. And I'll give you a, a, my reasons why. For the shade trees, you have acer sac, which is sugar maple. My suggestion would be to replace that with acer rubrum, red maple. The reason why is where you want to plant it, there's very little soil and the plant is surrounded by asphalt. And this is a tree that unfortunately now, we're at the southernmost range of its native habitat, it's still moving north uh, from the time of the last glacier period. And if you give it that type of environment, it definitely won't succeed. Uh, I myself have had eight sugar maples in my front property, and I'm now down to four uh, in, in just 15 years because of decline. Uh, then we have under the evergreens, uh, basically the same reason for Abies balsamia. It's another plant that really prefers to be in the high elevation areas of Connecticut, not here in the river valley and used near asphalt. Uh, it does not like our hot, hot summers and it tends to decline and have problems with uh, scale insects and mites. My suggestion would be to replace that with Abies con color which even though it's not native to Connecticut, it will uh, survive and do well in the application. Do we have a common name for that one, Kevin? Fortunately, con color fur. Con color? Yes, C-O-N, C-O-L-O-R, con okay. color fur. The beautiful plant. And that's your recommendation for the, uh, the other just- For the uh, other balsam, fur? yeah, for the balsam fur. Okay. Uh, and then last but not least, the uh, Pinus strovis or the Eastern white pine. Regrettably, in the last eight or 10 years, we've had around seven or more fungal strains come into the state that are causing uh, needle blight. And when you plant these near roads and with uh, exhaust, uh, it's a one-two punch and they tend to decline from day one. And I would suggest, again, even though it's not native, uh, you're not really looking at a lot of plants, only 13 plants to replace. Uh, I would suggest one of the cultivars of the West Coast Arborvitae, uh, Thuya plicata, just because it will in time get nearly as large as the Eastern white pine. 
and it will do very well in that application. Now, those are just suggestions, and they're suggestions that would help uh, the plant survive better. All right, thank you very much. I'll, uh, I'll take this back to the team. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. Um, Katie, did you have a question? I had a couple, yeah. One was um, on the, <clears throat> the maintenance program um, after construction. I know that we're doing education for the contractor up front and that there's maintenance during the construction phase. Did you say that there was any plan in place to um, maintain the, um, sorry. Okay, Katie, maintain I mentioned- the program beyond that, sorry. Yeah, I mentioned that I'm recommending that they have, uh, it's called the stormwater pollution prevention plan for the developed site. Okay. So that was one of my recommendations for additional How long would that last for the duration of the business or a limited amount of time? No, it would, it would essentially, you know, go into the future without an end, end date until something significantly changes on the site. Okay. Uh, as, as proposed, there's a lot of asphalt. There's a lot of roof a lot of impervious coverage. Um, and there will be, um, you know, uh, trailers and trucks and cars and, and uh, you know, having a regular program to uh, clean the stormwater basins to, um, uh, you know, uh, suck out the catch basins if necessary. Mm -hmm. That kind of stuff should be in, in that kind of a plan. Okay. And are there any flood zones nearby or environmentally sensitive land? No, we, we covered the property really well, but what's around it that could be impacted? Um, your question regarding the floodplain, we are not in the floodplain. Um, I'm not aware of the closest floodplain, but we're outside of the, of the 100 year. Okay. Because it doesn't seem like a hundred year anymore. <laughs> right. And there's no environmentally sensitive land nearby. Yeah, so I can weigh in on, on both those items and just jump on what Dave said about the flood has its own. So we did review the, the FEMA flood insurance rate maps for the site. Um, the site, site is located within a zone X unshaded. Um, for the map and that consists of areas beyond the 100 year and 500 year flood hazard zones. Um, so there are no flood hazard zones on the subject property. Okay. Um, with respect to, uh, I think you might be referencing rare species. So we have consulted with the Connecticut Department of Energy Environmental Protection National Diversity Database. Um, there are three species of um, special concern located in the vicinity of the site. Uh, they consist of eastern box turtle, big sand tiger beetle, and yep. violet dart moth. I saw that, yep. Yep, and so what we've done is provided a, as part of our wetland protection plan, we also have uh, components in there for particularly protection of uh, the eastern box turtle during construction. Um, We've presented those protection measures as well as um, those features to Natural Biodiversity Database and they've provided um, a final review letter approving with uh, our proposed protection measures. And we're, we're providing some habitat enhancement, particularly some uh, upland sandy um, habitat, warm season grass mixes. Uh, all native species that'll help support the big sand tiger beetle and the violet uh, moth. Okay, so those are food sources. Uh, food sources and and also a direct habitat, particularly for um, the tiger beetle. So, which 
you know, we'll utilize some of the open sandy areas um, for, for breeding. And then eastern box turtle would utilize a variety of habitats on the subject property, but also this sandy uh, habitat zone that we're creating would provide uh, possible nesting sites for box turtle. So just by way of our investigations on the property, you know, we've been out to the site numerous times over the past year. We haven't seen any direct evidence of box turtle. Um, and the historic records show that it's, it's present in the vicinity of the project area, but not the actual site. But uh, as a precaution um, stay, to be conservative, you know, we're including protection plan and we are including some in habitat enhancements should box turtle be utilizing the surrounding habitat. Cool, thanks. You're welcome. Um, any other questions from the commission? I have a couple of quick ones. One, um, do you have a plan use for the building? Is there a tenant for the building or is this a spec building? Mr. Chairman, I could I could speak to this. This is Brian Roslin with North Point Development. For the record, again, I'm calling in on David Rickard's um, Zoom here, so I apologize for the confusion there. Um, we do not at this time have a tenant for the building, so we are a speculative industrial developer. So we generally start construction without a tenant, and usually during the construction phase, we will um, be actively looking to to have a tenant. Um, come into the building. So our portfolio is pretty vast across the country. We have over 150 million square feet of development. Um, and I was gonna speak in previously about the maintenance uh, plans. We generally are long-term holders of our buildings um, and long-term investors into communities. And that's something that we take a lot of pride in. And you know, we, we look to, to be here and a part of the community and while we don't know the tenant, uh, we we are confident that we'll be you know look to move forward uh, um, as being a partner to the community here. Um, that being said, I will let you know we do have a development right down the road in Windsor um, that we had leased out recently to Target. Um, we do have many Fortune 500 companies that do occupy our buildings, um, but we also have a lot of local tenants as well uh, and local businesses that we support. So it, it, you don't know if it's going to be a manufacturer that might produce something that might require state uh, approval, deep or something. No, so we generally don't. If we do have any manufacturing to be on the light manufacturing and storage front, we don't get into any heavy manufacturing on our in our uses. Um, this is more of storage warehousing. So. Um, we do have more light assembly of dry goods, um, but not any heavy manufacturing uses. Right. So do you need the whole 361 parking spaces or is that something that you could um, lay out and, you know, back off on some of it for a later date, which might help you with some of the uh, encroachment on the wetlands issues? Mr. Chairman, to answer your question, I, we, we would not look to need them for what our typical tenant would need. However, we are required um, by zoning to provide even more than what we're showing here. And we actually have to, you know, once we get into a special use permit situation, we actually need to provide even more car parking and switch over some pavement areas to car parking to, su to be sufficient for the, uh, the zoning requirements for the zone. Um, so, you know, we, we generally don't like to to pin ourselves to a specific number before we know the tenant, but we would anticipate um, needing equal to or less than what we're showing as part of the application. Have you been to zoning yet? We have not, no. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So where are we? Uh, I guess we could table this. Uh, any comments from the public while we're on still here? I think we lost the public. Yeah. We always do. Um, Not always. Eh, once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> uh, any comments from the commission? Although we'll backtrack next meeting on this. Any comments for any 
Other comments from the applicant? They want to sneak in now. No, I'd just like to thank you for your time. And I'm sure Tommy will, Tom, sorry, Tom um, will say the very similar. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. Thank <laughs> you. <Brian. laughs> thank you. All righty. Um, Peter, anything? Sorry, no, no, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, again, I will have a much more uh, in-depth uh, staff memo for the next meeting. Okay, no problem. All right, is there a motion to table the public hearing until the February 21st? A uh, Tuesday. Right. Who made the motion? Mm -hmm. Wilcox, seconded by? Second. Katie? Uh, discussion. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. We will see you next month. Thank you. We Thank look you. forward to it. Okay. Great. Thanks, uh, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, I need a motion to add one agenda item. What? Uh, <laughs> Guess it's not 10 o'clock yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for, um, Joyce Pickett uh, wants to discuss, she's been asked to shorten our minutes. And I wanted to hear feedback from the commission on whether they should be shortened or let Peter and Joyce take care of that. So is there a motion to make an agenda item? Got to do that. So okay, I, yeah. So made moved. by Kevin, seconded by Katie. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Staying? Okay, two yes. Item number three. Okay. So, <laughs> so what is what is the concern? Can you fill us in on what's going on? Um, I was called in for a meeting with Mr. LaFountain, the assistant director. And um, let's see, what's her name? Uh, my immediate Wonder. supervisor, which I just met, Excuse and I was India Rogers. Yes, I'm so sorry. Okay. I was asked to shorten the minutes that they were too long. That's why your minutes look like they do tonight. Uh, so I wanted to find out from you because I felt that you should make that decision. Uh, yeah. Mr. LaFountain was saying in some places they just have the motion and who made the motion. And I didn't think that was appropriate for this board. I thought you needed more information. Yeah. So I'm yeah. bringing that to you to decide because I think it should be your decision. Generally under freedom of information, that's correct. You just need who made the motion, it was done and blah, blah, that's it. Um, do people rely more on the minutes for wetlands? I think wetlands is a lot more complicated than just... Mm -hmm. No offense, Katie. Zoning. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, if I if I could, uh, I want the commission to know that um, the minutes that I get from Joyce, uh, I typically um, cut them quite a bit, um, and in fact, uh, I did not send the minutes from the last meeting to you. So what I proposed earlier. Uh, was that Joyce and I have a have a uh, uh, a meeting and to compare um, the the minutes that were sent for the um, for the last meeting uh, the special meeting uh, after I get a chance to to look at them I really haven't had that chance yet so that we can all get you know all try to get on the same page and she she, she seemed to be okay with that. Yeah, uh, whatever you want. I agree completely. Yeah. Because it's only three pages. And it, I mean, I cut out so much information that I felt was important. So I can meet with Peter to find out what you want me to do. It's yeah. no problem. Right. So uh, what I try to do with my edits to um, Joyce's uh, minutes is, is I keep I keep a what I call a scorecard. Um, and what uh what i tomorrow morning i'm going to give the town clerk a, a a memo 
or a, 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 it's actually going to be what the, the legal notice for the decisions that were made tonight, only one decision, um, with the vote, not who made the votes necessarily, but what the vote was. So the um, freedom of information requirement for a quick turnover for the, for the decisions is something that I do. The minutes Joyce takes, you know, a little bit of time to get them back to me. And then those are the, the minutes that I uh, go through is what you guys see in the, in the agenda package. And what we sometimes discuss, um, you know, uh, um, <clears throat> typographical and, and, you know, other, other small errors like that. So um, the, uh, uh, the minutes uh, are, the minutes of the meeting are supposed to be available, uh, I believe it's seven days after yes, the, seven days. the hearing, after mm -hmm. the meeting day. So, um, and, and uh, when I get um, Joyce's minutes and do the edit, that's what I put up on the webpage. I put up my edit on the webpage. And when you guys uh, make your typographical changes or, or changes to the thing, uh, that's what, and then approve them, that's what goes on the record. Um, but what I was going to say is that I try to give the, um, uh, you know, the salient part of the, of the meeting. Uh, minutes for tonight's meeting would, in my opinion, need to say what the name of everybody who was there, the development or the applicants, uh, professionals made, made a presentation. It really doesn't need to be all that more detailed, you know, than that. So I kind of try to distill it even further down and, and it's not a, um, uh, what's the word? It, it, the, our minutes are not supposed to be verbatim, but they're supposed to tell what happened at the meeting and where you fit that in is, you know, we had, what, what did we have? Uh, six agenda items for the special meeting last week. Yeah. And if Joyce got it into three pages, it's going to be hard to make it smaller than that. Because they made me put it into three pages. Yeah, but well, I have so much material that I left out because I have about 15 pages. As the meeting is being, as you guys are, you know, discussing the meeting, I'm taking notes. Yeah. And I got tons of notes. And, and you know, after speaking with them, I made it as small as possible, as short as possible. But I left out, I feel, important information. So that's why I'm bringing it to you. Sure. So my, qu my question to Peter is, you know, in this day and age with electronic uh, recording, I guess if somebody wanted to know what happened to me and they have to skim through electronic, which is you miss half of it. Um, and the transcription is gobbled, kind of. You can't right. really go by the transcription. And so the minutes... I mean, I think they have some advantage to staff if they're in the file, even if they're, you know, at a later date. Is that true, Peter? Would you agree with that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if someone is researching, you know, what happened at a meeting from last year, the, the only, uh, I shouldn't say that. Nowadays, we have, we have the Zoom meeting. We have the uh, YouTube video if you want to watch and look through that. But before we were doing Zoom meetings, if you wanted to know what happened at the meeting, you had to go to the to the minutes. Mm -hmm. And it, we only did uh, transcribe uh, verbatim minutes if there was a uh, if there was a lawsuit. So it's important for the minutes to um, have some substance. So yeah, yeah, it, to to yeah. to be to be. Uh, researchable maybe that's the word yeah and one thing that um uh jose uh, started uh many years ago when jose started as the town planner uh we used to only make reference to the staff report and the conditions of approval in the staff report he suggested and i think it's a good idea to put the conditions of approval right in the minutes oh so Joyce's three pages are going to be longer by at least three pages because I'm going to put in the conditions of 
the specific conditions of approval. And as you guys recall, we added, or you added two conditions to one of the approvals and one condition to, to another one. So, you know, those things now go right in the minutes as approved with your modifications, if, if any. Yeah. So what does everybody think? I've got a, I've got a, a very cynical question. <laughs> okay. okay. Sure. And, it, and it's this. All, typically, when you deal with management, they're always looking at the bottom line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what money issue is bothering them? Is it that they have to pay Joyce? I don't know, Joyce. Are you paid? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. Good I'm for paid. you. I'm glad you are. He Probably does this for fun. Enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, the other thing I... is, are they trying to reduce how much time Peter spends on this so he can be, you know? Well, Mr. La Fountain said that usually the minutes are, it consists of, you know, basically what motion were made, who made the motion. And uh, that's why I brought it to you. I tried to make, I, I did put a little substance in there, but not a lot of things. I'm assuming that's why he uh, had a meeting with me. I'm assuming that's why, because of so, the budget. So can we decide that what you have been doing is appropriate and that you should continue that way and yeah, they just have to, well. It's up to the commissioners. Yeah. That's why I brought it to you tonight. Okay. How it's long does it typically take you, Joyce, to get the meeting minutes together? Like seven well, days? They give me seven days, but I can sit. I mean, I have sat and done it in one day. Oh, but I, you know, I have to proof over it several, I have to <clears throat> hold on to it to proof over it. I do it on my iPad and then I take it to the computer and do a spell check. And, you know, I just don't want to send it without really looking at it. I mean, I can do it in less days if that's what they wish. Well, but I you, personally usually, think they're a little long. Usually like we, the last meeting we had was four hours. Yeah. So that's why I take minutes. I mean, I take notes all through the meeting so I won't have to go back to the video. And because, uh, you know, it's kind of slow going through the video to find something. So that's yeah. why I'm adamant about sitting here. I, the other night when we did the four hour meeting, I was in my comfy chair. And basically, I was just taking notes. I have about 15 pages of notes that I, I took. You said that. You know, he, I'm a I'm a yes. copious note taker and I just do that by habit. Yes. But when I'm asked to do minutes for other boards that I'm on, I try to be as high level as possible and then just fill in some details because it just takes too much time out of life. Yes. And yes. I don't know if you would prefer to do some other work too. But well, I'm, I, when I came to Bloomfield, I was retired. Okay. And I was so you know, I, I wanted to go back to work uh, part time. So I was so thankful to get the job because of my age. And, you know, in New York, you're not getting a job at my age. So I was very thankful to get the job when I applied to it. So I'm here to serve you. If Peter wants me to sit down and go over uh, how he how you guys want it done, that's fine with me. Yeah, I, I used I'm, to I'm thankful that. to be here. I know. We appreciate you. I'm yeah. just wondering from the other commissioner's perspective, do we find value in the level of detail, knowing that Peter is going to cut down um, significant notes to begin with? I, well, I personally think they're a little long. But well, Peter's, Peter's been doing that anyway, he says. Okay. Yeah, right, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So it's not like he's going to cut it further than he has unless we say, yeah, go ahead and do that. Well, do we find value in the details that are there? Like yes. an, enough details. There's, is there too much or is there not enough or is just right? Uh, I, I they seem admit. long to me, but they're important stuff, like she said. Yeah. So I think it's okay. I, I think that Peter is, is, for lack of a better word, I'm sorry, but more equipped to cut the minutes down 
then you know because he knows what's important yeah yes he does you know, there's yes, no reference, does. but, you know. I agree. Okay. Yeah, I think I agree with that, too, but um, I'm not sure if it was mentioned, but Joyce also does minutes for the other commissions. I was just going to ask that, too. Yes, I have the, Z, zoning? the ZBA, the e, I had the EDC, the TPZ, right. and IWWSO. I lost the EDC because they are now uh, a redevelopment. Uh, agency, so they don't know if um, Mr. LaFountain said they didn't know if I would be taking minutes because the rules and regulations said that a person with a member is supposed to take the meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. So oh. I still have ZBA and you guys and TPZ, that's it. Sometimes P TPZ is a little long too. Yeah. And sometimes you guys are the same week. So, but, right. you know, I've been trying to get them on time. So that's like, that's like a full-time job. <laughs> I <know. laughs> well, I like it. I enjoyed working when I retired. I mean, I, I, I just couldn't deal with it, <laughs> but in New York, it's hard to get uh, a job at my age. So Adam, Adam, you were trying to say something? Yeah, just a question. I, I, I don't know why I make it overly complicated, but would it help if, if Joyce sent the rough notes over to Peter before going through the editing process and then Peter could cut them yeah. down a bit, and then uh, between the two of you editing, they'd be finalized, right? So at least there's a cut that volume down before. Yeah, that that's happening now. Oh, that's okay. happening now. Right. We're okay. gonna look Sorry. to try to make them smaller still. So, so do we just have it be, I mean, is it okay if we leave things as they have been? Yeah. That Peter and Joyce. Yeah, it's Joyce completely up to the commission. Yeah. Yeah, it's up to the commission. Okay. Uh, All right, Nadine, Alan, what are your opinions? Uh, Nadine, what do you, what, do you want to say something, Nadine? No, I'm fine with it the way it is. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, I, I'm fine with the way it is. I think that the more detailed minutes, I mean, because this commission is so technical on a lot of stuff that it would get lost in just, you know, who said what. And then if somebody wanted to, and I'm thinking really of staff if the, a year later they want to go, what did they do on that property? Well, it's happened before. And listen it's, to the whole it's happened model. before because at uh one of our meetings, we uh the well, it's happened to me in EDC a, a lot also. The uh commissioners had to go back to something that was said like two months uh earlier, prior, and they were able to go to the minutes and find out exactly what the person said. Yeah. So it does happen. But it's completely, you know, up to you guys. So I guess we can make a motion to leave the minutes process as is between Peter and Joyce. So moved. Seconded. Seconded by Adam. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? It's unanimous. Joyce, if you get any blowback, you know, let us know. Yes, yeah. sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. you show them the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tell them to read the minutes. <laughs> All right. Uh, so uh, I wanted thank to you. say that uh, if we're ready to go on the number, number uh, Roman numeral five, wetland agent permits yes, uh i just I, I wrote none on the on the on the agenda um but i had a uh, a meeting with a landscaper who wants to put some uh riprap stone in an existing channel on 11 penwood road at 11 penwood road and i talked to talked it over with alan and and I think we decided that a, a wetlands agent permit would be appropriate for that. Um, if anybody's familiar with the Penwood Road area, there's uh, um, the pond, uh, Gale Pond mm. is, is in their backyards. And there's a dam that holds up the water and there's an outfall structure that runs pretty much all the time through an open channel down to the road about couple hundred feet 
and they want to put some riprap in areas that are starting to erode. And I think it's a good idea. Um, and as I said, Alan and I discussed it and I think a wetlands agent permit is the way to go on that one. Um, okay. All right. Ongoing uh, projects. Yeah, there's, uh, there's still a lot of work going on because it hasn't gotten cold enough to freeze the ground yet. Uh, so um, the projects uh, that are presently underway include the new uh, apartments at 20 Jerome Avenue, which is uh, just down the road from the post office here in town. Uh, and the other big one that's, that's underway now is at 11 um, East Wintonbury at the corner of Blue Hills and East Winton, uh, yeah, oh, East yeah, Wintonbury. Yeah. Uh, they started to build the 10 duplex houses there. Um, and uh, it's the third, uh, fourth of the four corners, uh, four church corners. So they're building 10, 10 duplexes there. Uh, and they started, they started that one you know, pretty much, you know, well, well underway. Um, the other projects uh, that are coming to completion include the, the church at 1601 Blue Hills Avenue. Uh, I don't remember the name of the church, but they, they, have a, they had a little church building on the site. That and they, uh, they, had a, they built a, a large addition. Hmm. Um, so uh, let's see, I'm just trying to do, I'm doing this off the top of my head. Um, oh, the uh, project at 1301 Blue Hills Avenue, which is the uh, old Robertson gas station, uh, which was approved for a convenience store and, a, and fueling station uh, last year. They're underway too. They've got their tanks in the ground now. So they're, they're moving along on that project. Um, the, other, uh, the other projects in town that aren't complete include 65 Jolly Drive, the apartments there. Mm. Um, and there was one more, but I can't think of it right now. And, uh, uh, Jerome. Well, Jerome. No, I mentioned Jerome. Jerome. Yeah. Is it corporate crossing or something like that? No, no, it'll it'll come to me as soon as we finish the meeting. Uh, <laughs> but normally at this time of the year, we have we have either a couple feet of snow or enough snow that people aren't starting new projects. I was out at the at the 160, 116 West Dudley Town Road project today, and the the top inch maybe was frozen. But it isn't any deeper than that. So there's, there's, there hasn't been really any any reason to stop um, construction. Um, and so, uh, the you know, those that have working projects are are moving along. Um, I think there's there's likely going to be more um, more uh, construction starting up in the spring. In fact, I did get a call from a from a uh, construction uh, development um, company about building the apartments at the corporate crossing site, but that hasn't started yet. I think it will start. Okay. Yeah. So unless there's another one in particular that the commission wants to ask me about, we can move on to uh, the next part. Okay. Um, so uh, like I mentioned before, I didn't include the minutes in your package those, those, uh, Jan we'll, uh, Joyce and I will sit down together and review those January 9th uh, special meeting minutes, and they'll be on the agenda for the next meeting for approval, along with the meet minutes from this meeting. Uh, I'm assuming, Peter, that the, um, the library project was approved. Uh, yes, it was. It was approved. Uh, They're still yeah. coming back in February, are they not? Uh, yes. Um, Katie, you weren't at the last meeting, but the commission approved it with one additional condition uh, on top of the 15 that I asked for, in, which included additional information about 
how the bridge, how the footbridge is going to be constructed and how they're going to manage the snow or ice. Right. Um, right. That was a big concern of mine too. Yeah. And so, um, but the commission did approve the, the plan. Okay. Um, and they're up for the, uh, or they're on the planning uh, agenda, I believe this month for approval yeah. as well. Yep. Okay. Um, so moving on to other business, uh, I did get a new application. It was filed after the agenda package was put together and it's for uh, 360 Tunxis Avenue, which is the existing center fire district house number three. They want to tear that building down and build a bigger one. Which one's this? It's the one on Tunxis Avenue at the corner of Adams Road. The, the firehouse where they have the uh, the the, um, the house they burn. Yeah, the, yeah, they have a training facility back there. Yeah. So they want to they, they purchase some land to the wet uh, to the east on Adams Road, and they want to build a bigger building. Apparently, the Center Fire District has equipment that doesn't fit in the existing building. Oh. So. That's going to be on the agenda for the okay. for the February twenty first meeting. Is that, a, is that a big impact to wetlands? It is not. So uh, at this point, uh, I was going to ask the commission, and I can certainly, uh, I can certainly. Um, no, that's not true. I was going to say I could certainly share the plans electronically, but I don't have them electronically yet. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs a public hearing. There are no direct wetland impacts. Is so something you can do with a wetlands agent permit? Yeah, no, I, I wouldn't be comfortable with it. It's okay. a pretty good size building and site plan. No, I, I you know, if it was if it was an addition to the existing building or something like that, I might I might consider it as an agent. Right. But no, I think I'd rather have it come to the come to the commission. All right, thank you. All right. Anything else? Yeah, just a couple one one question. Oh. When are we scheduled? for the DEEP and our regulations and uh, wetland map. Oh, thank you for bringing that up. Uh, yeah, I was gonna ask too, thank you. Yeah, um, we have uh, a draft um, of, the, of the regulations. And uh, because we had a special meeting and other stuff, I should have put it on this agenda as a discussion discussion items but the draft um the draft regulations uh need to be um okayed by the commission and then we send them to the we send the draft to the deep for their review and that has to happen they have to get it 30 days before the public hearing that's scheduled so what i would like to do is um send everybody uh, again, the draft uh, regulation changes as I have them now. Hopefully in February, you, we can agree on the final draft language. You guys can agree on the final draft language and then it'll be bumped to the March, April meeting for a public hearing. Right. I'd I, like, to, I, I, I'm just sorry. I'd like to do the map, amend, the, the new official map at the same meeting or at least open the public hearing for that one at the same meeting. Um, but I have to decide what the cutoff is going to be, you know, because right now all of the, all of the map amendments that the commission approved, I think, except for one or two in, in uh, 2022 uh, uh, are in the data that I maintain, but I have to, you know, see, do we want to include, uh, the one we did tonight in the new map, you know, there, we need a, we need a cutoff date. So um, I think uh, we all, I also had some issues with plotting because it's a big, big data set. So I have to work through a couple of those technical issues. What um, do you think is the best cutoff date, Peter? Uh, I would, I would prefer to say the end of 2022, mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, you know, it doesn't. It's it doesn't take long to to incorporate the 
you know, the new, the new information. Uh, but we're also setting it up, as the commission may recall, um, we're, we're going away from the 66 individual sheets at one inch equals 200 scale to a townwide map that'll be a digital map that can be easily um, updated uh, on a more regular basis than once every decade. That's the plan. Okay. So I would, I would feel comfortable with a December 31st, 2022 cutoff. Okay. Because at least that's a, that's a solid separation. Yeah. Yeah. And that's probably that Cause as you said, once it's, once it's in place, then you can start, you can, you can add in tonight's information if you need to. Yeah. Right. And tonight's changes weren't that different than what was already on the map. Correct. Correct. Um, one of the other things that I've seen on other town official maps is they, they differentiate between the wetlands, essentially natural wetlands, and the man-made wetlands. And our map doesn't really do that. They also, on the West Hartford map, show former wetlands. Oh, geez. That's because it's West Hartford. <laughs> <laughs> which is it, which is interesting because you know once if the commission approves the wetlands to be filled or or obliterated in another way you know with a building over it really doesn't matter that they were former wetlands mm -hmm. you know in in my opinion now we are identifying stormwater basins as stormwater basins and if they hold water we're calling them a water course or a pond um and I do want to, you know, I do want to include areas that are uh, uh, created wetlands or man-made wetlands, um, and they're identified on the map as uh, soil type M A W in quotes or man-made wetlands. Okay. So that that you know is is a is a designation that says you know that these are not necessarily natural wetlands. Well, are there any sticking points in the draft regs, Peter? I thought we had already pretty much said these are good. Well, I, you know, I haven't had that, that <laughs> I haven't had that, um, uh, you know, uh, confirmation. Okay. And so what I'd like to do is include all, you know, uh, send you another draft. And, and I've added some, you know, stuff, nothing since the last draft, but the last draft was, only a couple months back. Uh, and then if there's any questions, we can go through the sections that are in question at the meeting and come to a, a final decision on the draft language. It won't become official until the public hearing and you guys approve them as official. Yeah, Peter, you know, I can't remember, but in the current draft, do we have the ability to increase the bond over what you know we stated you know like thousand dollars per acre or whatever i i think i think there is a provision but i'll have to check all right alan always wants to find people more money than uh no this would be a this would be a bond to ensure that work um, gets done or gets done yeah 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 and so if it's, if it's money it's never more. enough well <laughs> Well, you know, the, the money makes them do what they're supposed to do. You know, the bond, if they if they have a $10,000 bond versus a, a $1,000 bond, you know, if they don't do the work, they're going to lose the $10,000 bond and the, their permit's going to go away. Yeah. If like we that. find them $250 a day, they know they got to get the work done. If you're going to find them $25 a day, cost of doing business. Yeah. You know? Well, one of the sections that I did put in was, um, which is, I, I think the last one, and I don't remember what, I think it's in section seven, where we talk about uh, the, uh, um, the different types of permits. So you can get a permit, you can get administrative approval or wetlands agent permit. You can come to the commission for a commission permit. There's also something called a jurisdictional ruling. Mm -hmm. which is a request uh, to, for the commission to say you don't need a permit. 
And the change that I made was that all development, whether it's in the Upland Review area or, or outside of the Upland Review area, needs to do that. They need to say, make a make a request for the commission to to say they don't need a wetlands permit. And I I also think that it's important to not isolate property just because it's more than 200 feet from a water course if through the stormwater drainage system erosion on the site can cause a problem to the receiving water body so i included information in the draft about you know an additional stuff about that but we also have three new members and it would be good to get their their feedback as well i'm pretty sure i didn't send our three new members, the the latest draft, but I don't remember exactly when I sent that out. If you send out the latest draft, then we can look it over and. Yeah. Okay, and I'll try to work out the uh, issues with the plotting of the wetlands map, um, yeah. so that we can have a uh, we can have a, um, uh, a you know a discussion about that. There is a draft of both on the on the commission's website but i haven't seen any comments back you know from the public on them they've been there for a while and i'll make sure that the latest one of the regulations is on the website too this is a dumb question um we can adjourn first i, I don't want to hold anything up no you can ask I, I don't know where to find the recordings of our meetings. Town website. Yeah, they're, they're on the town website. They're uh, the. They're not easy to find. Nothing okay. is easy to find. Yeah, on the so, town website. Uh, I will. Um, uh, I will try to. Uh, I will try to uh, figure out. You know what what they, uh, you know, where they go. And, and maybe I need a new link directly to those. Cause you're looking I, for the, you're looking for the audio. Anything because- I get them from YouTube. Just type in uh, Inland Wetland Watercourse, the date. That's what I come thought. up. Okay. Mm -hmm. They'll come up on YouTube. Okay. Great. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah. When I have to go back, that's what I do. Okay. Thank okay. you. Yeah, maybe that's a good point. Maybe we need to put that in on the web page to remind people. All right. Anything else? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Seconded by Kevin, seconded by Katie. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, abstain. It's unanimous. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to stop the recording now.